Welcome to Midwest Sports Net. Hi, I'm Joey McWilliams. Joining me on the summit today is Coach Jason Aker, the head men's basketball coach at Oklahoma Baptist. And the Bison have recently earned the title of Western Division Champs in the Great American Conference for 2021. It's the first time there have been divisions in the GAC. And part of this is, that, well, the whole 2020, 2021 thing and there are just changes this year it's different but it's a nice title coach and uh congratulations on being divisional champions joey first off thanks for having me and uh sorry for being so uh <laughs> dapper today we uh typical 2020 uh with this year today was actually our picture day in uh, february instead of october for whatever reason but uh um it's been a great year um, not only have we had a great group, but we've been blessed with having some fun wins. Um, and you know what? Our team has just found ways to win. Um, as you know, in the Great American Conference, um, from top to bottom, whatever the standings say, any team can beat any team, in my opinion. I, I don't know if all the coaches would agree with me, but just from our staff's perspective, anytime we go into a game, we view every game as a 50-50 game, and we always – um, promote to our team was try to give our 50% to give ourselves that 50% chance of winning. And so to see them rack up the wins and they've kind of stacked up here. I think last night was our seventh straight on the road. Um, man, I'm proud of our team, but I've been proud of our team. Like a lot of us coaches, like a lot of the coaches I've talked to of just going through all the different things with the no fans and the COVID stuff. And we've had shutdowns and, Adversity has been our middle name as basketball coaches and college um, staffs around the country. And so it was neat to get to see them celebrate the West Division title the other night, just to see them smile, just to see them proud of uh, something that they accomplished, made it worth it um, to go through all the stuff that we've gone through this year for sure. Well, it definitely is a, a unique title to this season and to be able to celebrate something like that, I know is special. You earned that divisional title with an 85-76 win over Southern Nazarene, a rival game there, but also uh, Southern Nazarene really has been at the top of the league in the last two or three years, three-time defending champions. And so to get to not only take that divisional title, but to do it uh, against a team like Southern Nazarene, talk about what that meant. Well, it was a great game. I, I can't speak for their staff, but I thought that their kids really laid it out there and played well um, at different moments of the game. And I just thought um, our team was locked in. They knew that we were a game away. Um, it would have been sweet. It would have been memorable. It would have been something that we would have celebrated and remembered for sure, no matter who it would have been against. Yeah. After playing teams – three, four, four times this year with the ending of last year, five, six times in the last year. <laughs> Every team feels like a rival. Um, um, Southern Nazarene, I guess, is our um, rival partner going back to our NAIA days. But when you're playing teams, the amount that both the West and the East have played and every game feels like a rivalry game because you had just seen them two weeks earlier. Um, but it was a, it was a good game. I walked out of the game. Um, the people that I um, chatted with afterwards and the day after, I was like, you know, it always feels good to win. But it was a good game. It was back and forth. They hit us. I think they were up 14 in the first half. And each time out, we just kept coming over and just saying, hey, look, guys, these guys are really good. You guys are not playing bad. They're just out playing us right now. And so let's try to get on to our run. And, you know, basketball with the momentum and the runs, um, that surely has been the case um, in that game where it was a game of runs. We happened to be – we made a run there at the end um, to get them um, towards the end. But it was fun to be – it was fun just to be in the middle of competition. Um, man, we've been so lucky um, looking around the country and seeing different leagues have all kinds of shutdowns. And I'm thankful to the Great American Conference and most thankful to – uh, Coach Davenport and his staff here at OBU that we've been able to play in the games between weather, between blackouts, between COVID. <laughs> There's a lot of stuff out there to trip us up. Uh, um, and so it was fun. We had a blast playing. 
You know, you're you're right. It hasn't just been all COVID. I mean, uh, we've had a polar vortex in in recent weeks and uh, outages. You're right. There's so many things to work around. We're speaking now with Coach Jason Aker here on the summit, and I encourage you, please do subscribe to the channel Midwest Sports Net. We would appreciate that. It it uh, would be a big help uh, on our end. Coach, you're in your third season now, and it, it seems like things are going well. Last season, of course, I know you didn't get to play in the NCAA tournament, but the Bison earned that NCAA tournament bid playing in the GAC championship. And now, of course, with this divisional title, is this where you felt like the program could be at this stage? Well, I certainly, um, coming into the job, Coach Davis and I and Coach Davenport, you know, OBU has a long history of basketball success. So that's always out there. And um, Coach Hoffman, who I worked for, had had a great run here. Coach Tolan had had a great run here. Coach Bass, um, way back when, when my dad played, had a great run. But, you know, ever since we came in, um, I don't know that I ever looked at it that way. I don't know that I look at basketball that way. We just try to take it one day at a time. Um, Very cliche um, to say here on an interview. But when you start looking at the schedule before the game, before the season, all the past three seasons, if I start looking at the schedule, I'll talk myself into that we're we, we're not going to be able to win a game um, <laughs> because of the respect that I have for all the programs in our league um, and just the competition. I mean, not only is the coaching really good, but I just feel like the players, um, you know, coming from the Southern Conference, the Atlantic Sun and the Big South Conference, I've seen so many of these young men in our conference that not only would have been able to play in those Division I conferences, but would have played very well. And so it's intimidating, um, frightening, um, nerve wracking if you start to look ahead. And so I've really just tried to hunker down and try to just get ready for one game at a time. And then first semester, you were in that mode of you were just, you know, we had no games. And so you were just trying to see who you didn't have in quarantine and who you could try to make better for that day. And so I definitely feel like OBU, um, and I say this genuinely, I feel like OBU is a special place as far as basketball goes. There's a big faction, fraction, or whatever the word is, um, portion of OBU folks that want basketball to be good. And so I'm very supported, me and Coach Davis and Coach Rogers, the administration is going to do everything within their power, within the constraints of what we're going through as a school or a COVID year for us to have the resources that we need. And so for that, um, you know, I've seen it done before. I've lived it. I've worked with it. I've, I've grew up in a family. And so OBU being successful in basketball is definitely an expectation. Um, but as it relates to me and my abilities and our staff's abilities, um, we don't get too far ahead of ourselves here in our offices, for sure. Well, Coach, you're right, and the fans at Oklahoma Baptist have seen their share of good basketball over the years, so I would imagine they definitely do want to support that. I won't ask you to look ahead with this question, then. I'll ask you to look back, if that's all right, okay? okay. So you've, you, you've won four games in a row, including a victory over East Central on Thursday night, and you're coming into your final game of the season on Saturday Eight of the, excuse me, 12 of the last 13 games. There was an eight-game winning streak in there as well. So I'll, I'll have you look back just a little bit and, and talk about this season and, and what you think about the season as a whole to this point. Well, when you say it like that, when you wrap it up in a bow and say 12 of our last 13, it's hard to believe, to tell you the truth. It really is. Um, it hasn't felt that way. It's felt like one battle at a time. But i tell you what, my three seniors, Jaquan Sims, Brantley Thompson, um, Harrison Stoddard, they've been determined. And so they haven't played flawless games, but any time that our team has needed something, they've always been able to provide it. Our new players um, have added a lot. Our returners that are underclassmen, Jarius Hicklin and Trey Green and Jack Pruitt. Um, our new players led by Jordan Thompson and Nigel Wilcox, um, Savon Milton, um, we've, we've had guys just show up time and time again. Last night we were, um, in another one of those battles at East central Jordan Thompson did not play a ton against Southern Nazarene because they have those, you know, six foot 10, um, Kevin Durant like guards. So it's tough for 
um, those small guys to play. But he came in and had 17 points. I think he hit three threes in a row in that second half um, against East Central. And so I couldn't be – I think the leadership of our team, led by our assistant coaches and led by Brantley, Harrison, and Jaquan, I think as I'm sitting here just trying to wrap my brain about what you just said because we haven't had much time to think about it as a whole – that has to have something to do with a lot of our success because, you know, I think our team has just found ways to win. Um, we've been equally matched up with all the teams in the GAC um, on the Oklahoma side, but we have found ways to win um, 12 of our last 13 games. And so East Central, um, who we played last night on the road, they had beaten us twice in our building. And so um, I tell you what, anybody can beat anybody. Uh, um, in our side, and I've watched a little bit of uh, the Arkansas side, and um, I don't see any difference there. I mean, I I've watched uh, I've watched a Washita, Monticello, Henderson, who um, Coach Jimmy is one of my most favorite people in on and off the court. Um, he's got his team playing really good. Sar Southern Arc um, is right there to win the league. Um, Harding has definitely had their moments, and so. Um, I don't know what this tournament's going to be like, but I think it'll be kind of like what we talked about going into last year's is, is that it'll be a wild tournament for sure. I was going to ask you about that, but I think, I think you summed it up really well. Of course, the great American conference now in its 10th season. And, and it is a conference that is uh, gaining more national respect, but with teams like yours and coach, then if we can, I'll, I'll have you just, uh, you know, wrap up our time and talking about that just a little bit. The postseason is on the way. You all have one more game on the schedule taking on Southwestern, but then the postseason and you all at 13 and three, uh, will have, I believe the best winning percentage, win or lose, uh, on in your final game uh, throughout the Great American Conference, regardless of division. But you're the top seed coming out of the West there. And, you know, Coach, I, I really, as good as a season was last year, you all really made some noise in the Great American Conference tournament, making it to the championship game. Yeah. And I, I think that went a long way toward, you know, finalizing that at-large bid that you won. Talk about the postseason ahead. Well, um, I don't want to get ahead of ourselves because we play Southwestern tomorrow. Um, Coach Evans um, and their bunch um, will have our hands absolutely full um, tomorrow on senior day. Um, but as far as the Great American Conference Tournament and then if we're fortunate enough to get another bid, um, we always talk about the postseason being a reward for our team. Um, in years past, you weren't guaranteed a spot in the postseason. You had to earn your way into the conference tournament. I'm so thankful to the conference um, that they allowed all the young men and all the programs in because there's we didn't know what this year was going to entail with the number of games. And each program, if you were to get each coach on here, my guess would be all the adversity that um, and different scenarios that COVID has presented all of them would have different stories about things that were fair or not fair or tough or challenging. And so I'm very thankful for that. I think all the young men, it's a chance for us to give them as a conference one more game. Um, we always talk about the postseason being a reward for our players. Um, and this year couldn't be any more fitting. Um, what other, whatever games were allowed to play, the quarterfinals, if we were to advance and move forward, the NCAAs, if we were to be able to play in it in advance. Any game we play is a reward. Um, it's for the players. And so we'll try to do our best to make sure that we're there on time and we have a scouting report and a pre- and post-game meal. And we'll really cheer. If you watch us play, we always really cheer really hard for our guys um, and get into the game with them and their families. Um, but I'm, I'm looking forward to today, to tell you the truth. We have practice today. Um, every time that I get to spend with our team, um, it's really been a blessing. The thing that we talked about last night um, before our game um, is that whenever you give your best, um, whenever your team and staff, regardless of your role, whenever you give your best, God can do something with that, whether it be a memory or a tough loss and a lesson. And so we've talked a lot about stuff like that, about how we can grow in our faith. Um, and just what the Lord can do with your best. And so this team epitomizes, they try their best. And so 
God has done a lot in our hearts and a lot in our lives through this season. Um, I'm sure there's more adversity um, that is ahead our way. We did all pass our COVID test yesterday, so maybe that um, adversity is delayed for a few days. But we're just thankful. Um, we feel very fortunate that God has allowed us to use our talents with basketball um, this year so far that we've gotten to play as much as we have. And I think a lot of credit goes to the administrations, um, the other teams in the GAC, and then our president and our AD, Coach Davenport, of to give our boys the opportunity and their parents get to be here tomorrow in our building um, to celebrate um, our seniors. Um, whether or not they're going to come back, we just have told them that we'll um, deal with that in the off season. So we're going to celebrate them tomorrow. We're going to give our best and see um, see what the Lord will do with that. Sounds like fun. Sounds like you're wrapping up the season well, and I really appreciate your thoughts and and uh, summing that up for us here as we <clears throat> wind things up here on the summit. It's been a privilege to get to visit with Coach Jason Aker again. The Oklahoma Baptist Bison currently thirteen and three, and will be the top seed coming from the West in the Great American Conference. Coach Aker, thank you very much for being with us today. Very likely the best dressed interviewee <laughs> that I've had on the summit. <laughs> I know that you all are coming out of team pictures. What an, what an interesting time to have those team pictures. But you know what? It's it's great that you have been with us. And success to you all then as the season goes on and, and as it winds down and wherever it takes you this year. Thank you for being with us today. Joey, thank you for what you do for our conference, and thank you for being so kind to me.